This is a step-by-step -step overview to set up Live Preview. You see I have the Live Preview app installed on my iPad mini, and I've got the Rad Studio IDE installed. Now, first of all, I'm running it inside a virtual machine, so I have to have uh, my virtual machine, you'll notice it's connected to the back in time network here, and the iPad mini is also connected to the back in time network. So we can check and make sure the subnet mask and IP address are there. So then inside our virtual machine here, I set it up with the network as bridged, which then actually connects the virtual machine itself, uh, client OS to the network directly instead of uh, shared. So use bridge so that the IDE is publicly visible on the network. Otherwise the iPad cannot find the IDE. And we can look at the IP address here. And we see that it is uh, on the same subnet here. So they should be able to find each other. And actually I can ping the iPad here if I wanted to. Ping 10.0.1.15. So if you are having trouble, if you can't ping the iPad from your uh, machine, then you're not gonna be able to get there. But also, the if your machine's not on the same subnet, if it's not on the bridge network, it won't work. So now that I've got everything connected correctly, I can open up Live Preview App. And it's scanning the local network. It's sending out UDP packets on the local network in order to find the IDE. If it can't find it, you can use the advanced key here, or advanced option, to provide a IP address that it will then go to and look for it there. So if it doesn't find it, or if the machine is not um, on the same subnet, if it's across the subnet, but still accessible over uh, TCP IP, then you can use the advanced in order to find it. Uh, this all behaves the same as the app tethering technology. So in the IDE, there's some configuration for this. We've got options. And then down here under form designer, we have fire UI live preview. By default, this is turned on and the server name will be your machine name, but you can rename it to whatever you want to. And you can optionally provide a password. Once the device is connected, you'll see it listed here. So let's go ahead and connect. So I just select the one I want here and hit connect. So it's gone out and made a connection and you see here, it shows it as connected. So now the UI is being sent across to the iPad. Now, none of the code behind, any code that would be written like event handlers on these buttons, et cetera, is not sent to the iPad. There's no code execution coming across. It's just the user interface is being rendered on here. So basically we're dynamically creating user interface. And if I make changes to this, like if I move something around, we see that it updates in near real time on the iPad. When you're done, you can either close the live preview app or come into options again and select the device and right click and say disconnect client and that will disconnect it, force disconnect it.